Hi there, me hearties. Drinkers here, and uh, it's time to do some Super Chat catch-ups. We had a great time the other night on Open Bar number 46. All good, loads of people sent us loads of questions, and, well, as often happens, we just didn't have time to get through them all. So I'm here, Mauro's going to be along shortly, and we're going to do our best to get through them and answer uh, all the questions that you had for us. So I will kick things off, and I'll do my best to keep you guys entertained until he gets here. So... Um, the last question that we had from the other night was Nicholas Miles, who said, It's not just the accusations. I think the texts that his attorneys made public really turned the masses against Majors. Uh, yeah, so that's Jonathan Majors, who's in a lot of trouble at the moment and seems to be getting dumped left, right and centre by everybody. Um, yeah, I think the, the text messages that they released, they thought they, they were going to exonerate him, but they kind of had the opposite effect. Um, I think they were pretty damning in terms of like what his girlfriend was saying it's almost along the lines of oh i'm really sorry that i made you put me in hospital <laughs> but shit man yeah uh, i guess these things happen um yeah things uh these these defenses don't always pan out the way you hope uh i know that they they certainly turn to a lot of his um you know his uh, theatrical friends from back in New York, which is where he came up from, and um, expecting them to back him up, and they kind of didn't. So yeah, it doesn't look good. Uh, Doctor Mub says, for the panel, if you're only allowed to watch, read, and critique one genre for the rest of your life, what genre would it be, and why? Good question, man. Um, for myself, I mean, I don't know what the others would say potentially, but uh, I think mine would probably be the action genre. Uh, I think it's a pretty broad genre. You can do all kinds of different things within action. You know, it could be thrillers, it could be um, horror elements with it, um, you know, it could be historical. There's all kinds of different things. Uh, so it's pretty broad and it's just a lot of fun for, for people like me. I'm a simple man. I just want to see things explode and uh, and preferably a bit of boobs as well. So, you know, that would be fine for me. Uh, Grayson Barnett said... I started a GoFundMe for my book because there's no way it's going to make it past the sensitivity readers. It's a tragic comedy about a missing person's case in a brothel gone wrong. GoFundMe, Merchant of Souls. Well, there you go, man. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with that. Sam Wallace Art says, They're going to bring in John Boyega as the new Kang. Bet. <laughs> That'd be funny, actually. Uh, John deserves another chance, but man, I just can't see him working with Disney again. <clears throat> Uh, Flavius Alicanthor says, Sir, awesome streams, great panels, but where the hell is the critical doggo? Well, this is the problem I've got now, you see, because i got my new setup. And so, excuse me, I was just drinking there. Um, yeah, the, the way the camera angles now, sorry, the way the camera is angled now, can't really fit the doggo into shot. Uh, and so I have to have a separate cam for, for him or her, because i got two of them. But yeah, the next time I do an open bar stream, I'll have another critical doggo cam, so not to worry. You'll get your critical doggo fix. Angel Fire said, Evening, gents. I watched Dread with Carl Urban for the first time this past weekend, and I absolutely loved it. Nice. Both he and the rookie were amazing. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, personally, I've done a review on it. I think I gave her a drink of recommends. Um, yeah. Very much enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a good take on the source material. Uh, it was... Um, nice simple plot, really. You know, Dredd gets locked in a building with a bunch of people who want to kill him and he's got to fight his way out. Easy peasy. That's all you need, you know. Uh, Bandit Red says, F it, fine, Mauler. After you're all gushing over Buffy for years, I will watch it. I'll watch all damn seven seasons just to see if you were trolling. <laughs> okay. Best of luck with it, man. I mean, I remember from back in my high school days, like, Buffy was just all the rage back then. It was great. Um, no, I enjoyed it. I didn't uh, <clears throat> I'd be lying if I said if I said I'd seen every single episode, but uh, yeah, I've seen a fair bit of it over the years. Uh, Confucius said, "Sorry if it's been asked, but I was wondering who did the opening theme song. Uh, almost sounds like something Doctor Dommercam would do." Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question, actually. The guy who did it for me originally, I think his YouTube channel is called Guitar Eighty Six. Um, yeah, good guy. He just got in touch and said, "Look, I." I put together a, a theme tune for you for Open Bar. If you'd like to use it, then go ahead. And I said, yeah, if you don't mind, I think it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, he did a nice, good, you know, clean version uh, as far as the audio goes, and then I just spliced in some footage. And, uh, yeah, the rest is history. But, yeah, I really like what he's done, and uh, go check out his channel. I think he's done a lot more stuff over the, the past year or two. Um, 
Man of the Half Hour says, Gary, we finally got a look at the Venture Brothers series finale. Are you excited? I'm, for, I'm afraid I can't answer that for Gary. Sorry, man. Uh, Brad Best says, I just started watching OG Star Trek for the first time. The writing's incredible. The Enemy Within is one of the greatest TV episodes that I've watched. Yeah, I mean, you know, Star Trek back in the day, it obviously didn't have the special effects uh, that we have today, you know, so it was pretty basic in that department. But it made up for it, I think, with some really thought-provoking episodes. And yeah, there was some great stuff in there. There was obviously some not so good stuff but it's the same with every show you know tng had its share of rough episodes as well but overall yeah fantastic stuff and just so far ahead of its time so um yeah glad to see people still getting into it now and enjoying it uh dragonic ice mage said as per drinker's request gary i have to give you some flack on fnt last week you forgot to read my very first super chat <laughs> i went by a different name back then but still shame on you have a great show tonight guys yeah, thank you, man. And it's just, it's the nature of the business, unfortunately. Um, you know, both Open Bar and Friday Night Tights get a lot of Super Chats, and we all do our best to read all of them, but um, inevitably some slip through the cracks just when you're dealing with so many. Uh, and it, it sucks, uh, and I do apologize, like because I've done it before myself as well, and it's uh, it's annoying when I find out I've missed one. But uh, we do, we're only human, we do our best. Uh, type Zero says... When you think about the multiverse, Kang uh, could be abusing infinity of women, but he could also be falsely accused by infinity of women. Love you, Molly. <laughs> That's a very good point, actually. I never considered it. Um, do the do the like uh, incorrect requests, or sorry, the the false accusations outweigh the the correct ones in the grand scheme of the multiverse? Who knows? If you're dealing with infinity, I suppose it could be anything. Uh, Cos Billingham says, I just want to say thanks to Drinker, Dave, and Nerdrotic. Without your videos, I wouldn't have watched Picard Season 3, and today it reduced me to tears. I bailed on Season 2 after a few episodes, but Season 3 was magic. Yeah, man, I mean, it's good to see. You know, I think we all had that kind of experience with it. Uh, I certainly went into it having no idea what to expect, but uh, I had been completely done with Picard after Season 2. You know, I just I refused to watch it, and I said I was I was never going back to it. Uh, and after hearing Rob talk about it, hearing Dave talk about it, hearing Gary talk about it, uh, how good season three was, I said, okay, fine, I'll bite the bullet and I'll give it a try. You've persuaded me. And I'm glad I did, you know. it's uh, It really gave a fit and send off to the TNG crew, so I appreciated it. And it's nice when life throws us a little bone occasionally, you know. Um, High King Finar, Alpha Chad, says, <coughs> excuse me, Asked this question on Real BBC the other day, but I phrased it poorly, so allow me to ask again. Would any of you fine gentlemen consider reviewing Tolkien's greater works like the Silmarillion? Keep up the great work and cheers. I mean, wow. That's a hell of a thing to take on. I mean, I guess Gary would be better placed than me to do something like that because his knowledge of Tolkien is a lot better than mine. I mean, he's probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. Um, book reviews are always tricky to do because, one, you've got no... You've got no video footage to work from. You would just have to, I don't know, either take generic footage or just um, try and work in things from the movies and the, <laughs> God help us, the Rings of Power to try and match up with what you're talking about. But um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's a pretty tricky undertaking to review books like that. Um, yeah, and well, there's already a lot of like self-professed Tolkien scholars out there, so you kind of have to wonder how much more insight you can bring. Um... Blue Blazer says, they're making changes to One Piece for the live action to appeal to a broader audience. To One Piece, the largest, most popular comic IP of all time. Mm, I didn't, didn't know that, man. Uh, Sam Wallace Art says, Bud's feed. Oh no, anyway, Last Voyage of the Demeter looks okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind, Bud's feed is gone. I guess we'll all survive. Um, Derek says, it's hard to believe, but Disney Star Wars has made it me like the prequels more i don't i don't have trouble believing that i can totally buy into it i think it's made a lot of people appreciate them more it's just nice to look back on a an era of filmmaking where it was just i don't know there's a wholesomeness i guess to what george lucas did with the prequels i get the impression it was just a guy doing his best you know his best wasn't that great but he was trying he wasn't just some cynical money-making corporation out to push the message um what else is he saying here? I mean, sure, the acting and dialogue was terrible, true, uh, but at least they had a vision and a coherent story. They did, yeah. Um, when I was asked to like define the different 
trilogies. You know, I said the OT was a good idea, well executed. The prequels were a good idea, badly executed, and the sequels were no ideas, horribly executed. So, you know, at least the first two had something to recommend them. Blue Collar Loser says, Seeing Evil Dead rise tonight, thoughts on the return to horror and Bruce as an exec producer? I'm all in favour of it. Uh, like Gary, I love Ash versus the Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, Bruce is promoting the film. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see him back and doing stuff. And um, yeah, hopefully it turned out well. I haven't seen it yet myself, but uh, the trailers looked all right. Uh, Zedbad says, Hello, drinker, mauler, and panel of friends. I recommend giving Vordom the Price of Death a watch. It's a feature-length stop-motion action film on YouTube. Love you all. Thank you. I mean, um, yeah, stop-motion animation in this day and age. Sign me up. Sounds pretty cool. Trenchman says, I'm still reeling from the fact that Ridley Scott terminated Neil Blomkamp's Aliens blockbuster vision for his midlife crisis theology lecture. Yeah. Oh, what could have been? I think if you had a guy who was going to direct an Aliens movie, then Blomkamp was, was going to be one of the top candidates. I think I saw some of the, the promo art as well, where they had um, Michael Bain, you know, in uh, in a Colonial Marines um armor again and his face is all scarred up um so that looked pretty cool i must admit um it's a shame we never got to see more of it oh and here we go the long man is here to join us hello hello, hello. um i was yeah i was up against it time wise a little bit this evening and so i decided to just kick off and start so no here we go. problem um but yeah hopefully you can you can add to a few of these there was one actually that was um it was a question for the whole panel. It was basically saying if you could only pick one genre of movies to review and analyze for the rest of your days, what would it be? Probably going to be sci-fi. Action. Ah, okay. Well, I like love my crazy ideas. Yeah. No, that's fair play. Uh, I went for action just on the basis that you can make it quite a broad genre, and there's probably a lot of a lot of variety there. But yeah, I like I like the idea of sci-fi as well. Um, yeah, and the, the last question there was about um, the fact that we never got to see the Neil Blomkamp Aliens movie that could have been... Um, yeah. Don't worry, like... we've got plenty more Alien stuff on the way. Yay! Horrible. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rory Grimshaw said, On the topic of space, did any of you guys see SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy prototype launch? I did! Um, it started out great! Just all went a bit crazy towards the end and blew up. But I think from what they were saying, like the fact that it just cleared the launch tower and didn't blow up immediately is is kind of a win for them. So yeah, good on them, I suppose. You know, it's like crazy new technology that they're employing and it's the first time it's ever flown, so I'm kinda of not surprised that it wasn't successful. But hmm. yeah. Flew for about a minute or two, got up into like above the atmosphere, I think, so that's that's pretty damn good, I would say. The only news that it exploded, but yeah, it's it's cool to see just the the fact that it's like so fucking enormous. But yeah, it's good stuff. Um, Jimbit says, if the allegations end up being true, who would you pick to replace Jonathan Majors as Kang? Some people have suggested John Boyega there, which was funny. Ryan Gosling, I guess. Sure, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> just watch people melt down. Yeah. Uh, Pie Guy says, I heard they're casting, sorry, recasting Captain Marvel. Is this true? I have heard no such thing and I could not tell you. Um, as far yeah, as I'm not anything for that. Brie Larson will always be Captain Marvel for me. Yeah, she's my Captain Marvel. <laughs> she's my queen. Um, Liam Shine said, just watching, or just started watching, and as usual, I'm enjoying the show. My question is, what are your thoughts on the Resident Evil uh, Redfield Bloodline meme? What's the meme? I'm not sure what the meme is for that one. Hold on. I will is give it a fan theory. Uh, I'll give it a quick check. So it's a meme known as Chris posting. In the lore, Chris and Claire are orphans, which means, for the sake of the joke, their bloodline dies. Um, what's that? Yeah, so... 
Yeah, then Bloodline dies out if they don't have children. The reason why Chris specifically pushes in the meme's lore for Leon to get with Claire, oh yeah, is that they flirt a bit at the end of RE2. So yeah, I have kind of seen them. It's just like Chris constantly trying to get them together to carry on the Redfield Bloodline, so okay. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it's it's alright. Um, Drum Gig says, is Maul going to make a full-length unbridled rage video on The Mandalorian? Please, oh please, say yes. No, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> like the the minis, or, or rather the, the TV episodes we do on EFAP, I feel like uh, are about as thorough as it's going to get, because I don't think Mandalorian's very good, but I don't think it's the kind of thing I'd end up making a video on. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, Kyle Kiernan says, Moller, please make a rage of the Game of Thrones season finale. That's one people have been asking for for a long time. Who knows what will happen in the future? The, the wounds are still there, I think, for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Timothy Finch says, can we please talk about how stupid the term blip is to refer to universal genocide in the MCU? <laughs> is there anything Marvel won't infantilize to the point of death? No, there isn't. Yeah, I was gonna say this that's precisely what that is, and that's that's why that is that way. <laughs> uh Trenchman says, Drinker, the explanation to why Star Trek is the way it is. It's because blockbusters have ruined people's brains. Intellect is a boring duh. Yeah, pretty much. I think as well, because you know, the the new JJ Abrams movies were trying to appeal to like the mass market, which is not really something Star Trek ever did. It was you know, it was a bit more niche. It's, it's sci-fi. It's for a more mature mind, um, which is a bit in short supply these days. But yeah, when you're trying to make like 500 million for your movie, it's it's got to just be all about the action, I guess. Um, Timothy Finch says, hype for Bioshock 4. Hopefully with Ken Levine gone, it can go back to its Bioshock 2 roots and shit on communists instead of being a bad father-daughter sim. <laughs> but I thought he was a part of... Uh... The next Bioshock. I don't know. I don't know much about the behind the scenes going on there. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Uh, Talking Panda says, still waiting for that drinker recommends on Primal. Just watch one and you won't regret it. I would love to. Um, yeah, just got to find the time, man. Uh, Timothy Finch also says, uh, oh no, I think that's just a repeat there. Um, Ob, say Obduleo says, Sounds like this is the Fallout New Vegas of Star Trek. One last gasp of the real Fallout slash Star Trek before returning to the idiocy of Bethesda slash Kirk's, uh, Kurtzman. Yes. There's mm. a whole bunch of Star Trek shit on the way. Buckle up. It's going to be, well, a ride. Uh, also from Timothy Finch says... Oh no, he's just spamming it. <laughs> it's the same fucking... I mean, you can spam this one when you're sending a super chat, so that's all right. Uh, yeah, really interested in Bioshock 4, I guess. Intelligent Crayon Eater says, part of the problem is that most writers have no non-Hollywood experience and so they have no idea how a military officer conducts themselves because they never met one in real life. Yeah. I mean, there's this crazy thing called research that people used to do, but I guess that's not a thing anymore. Um, nah. Trav to the World says, first, sub to the service. Second, watch season three. Third, unsubscribe. Fourth, when asked why you're cancelling, say you just wanted to see season three of Picard because the buzz and you won't watch any Kurtzman Trek. Yeah, go for it. Um, if you can just sign up and get it on free trial for like a week or two, just watch Picard season three and then uh, get off it again. But, you know, yeah. to be fair, Yellowstone and Tulsa King are both really fucking good. So I'd recommend watching them too before you cancel. Uh Mega Reacts says, I'm working on a two-hour movie edit for Picard Season 3. Condensed down, I think it will go from decent to great. That would be an interesting thing to see, actually. A whole season edited down into a movie. Do it. Yeah. Abel34 Bravo says, I haven't seen any of Picard. Can I skip Season 1 to 2 and just watch Season 3? Yes, you can. If I can, is there anything from 1 to 2 that I need to know? Well, at the end of Picard Season 1, Picard dies, but then he comes back as a robot body, Picard. But apparently it's just like his human body and it can age the same way. Don't know how I love why. that though. It's like, yeah, do I need to watch it? It's like, no, just keep in mind he died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Because they, they, they do reference it here. I mean, I, I can tell that they hate the fact that this is a thing they can't get away from. But I guess, I guess they have to deal with it. Um, 
Forest through the trees said, prepare for ramming speed. Sir, another ship is coming in. It's the Enterprise. Worf revered the Enterprise E. Terry coming back to do a film with Worf to show the fate of the 1701E would be awesome. Um, it would indeed, yeah. Um, there's a whole bunch of things you could do, but I think that generation of actors is just done now. They're all in their 70s. They're not realistically going to want to be able to do any more of this. Um, James Moore says, Twilight fan fiction. Gary, that's called Fifty Shades of Grey. That's true. That's literally what the origins of Fifty Shades is. Yes. Started out as Twilight fan fiction and somehow became a massive hit. Um, having because talked it's to... that good. It really is. Uh, no, I, it's funny. Like I remember talking to people in the, the UK publishing industry and pretty much all of them were stumped. They're like, we've no fucking idea why this was so successful. Like there's been... <laughs> a shit ton of like smutty um, novels written before and since, and they've never come near that kind of success. It was just one of those weird lightning in a bottle moments, I guess. Um, Blue Team Epsilon says, some fanfics are really good. Semper Vigil Vigilis is one Mass Effect fanfic. It's big enough for to be a full book. Fair play. Yeah, I mean, some people get their start as fanfic writers and then eventually progress on to doing their own stuff. And yeah. I guess quality rises to the top, you know. Falcon Style says, being unsatisfied with today's sci-fi, I started my own comic series called GH057 Story. Robots, space station, action, a cute woman, no agenda. Launched it earlier on Indiegogo. Help is appreciated. Well, there you go, guys. If you're help, if you're interested in supporting independent media and uh, you know, guys just getting their start, then check out GH057 Story or ghost story, as uh, as you could probably phrase it. So, uh, yeah, take a look. Easy E says, We could factually draw an inspirational link from the September 11th attacks to Twilight, since the author said she was inspired by My Chemical Romance. Oh, God. My <laughs> Chemical Romance. But if there ever was, there was like a song that just defined the early 2000s, it was that. Jesus. Yeah. Um, Simon Ho says, STP, it's refreshing to see men play the roles of men again uh, and treat Seven of Nine with a respective rank and the realisation that no man will ever be allowed to touch boob. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Aurora Uplink says, I love the scene of Mando where he adopts Grogu, father-son relationship show. I think Favreau and Lucas wrote the high point of season three with their choice. I mean, <laughs> I just... I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like... They've already done how that season two's finale. If 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 nothing else, like I was really baffled by that scene in season three. So I was like, "We've done this. Why is this happening?" So you like, can turn him into a mini Mandalorian, isn't it? And I've seen people point out as well. It's like so lame that he had to like ask his fucking weird cult permission to be Grogu's dad. It's like fuck that. Yeah, that should have been just something between them. I just I don't know why he cares so much about being a Mandalorian at this point. Like. Why can't he just go his own way? That's just, that's like what he wants to do anyway. Like it's not like he wants to carry on serving the cause or anything. He's just gonna go and live with Grogu on some ranch in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't yeah. matter if he's a Mandalorian or not. It's just like yeah. And how much more satisfying that is for the audience to be like, yeah, do your own thing, buddy, instead of like, oh yeah, make make sure you bathe in those waters, man. Yeah. Don't you don't you want to see the guy get out of the cult instead of just get deeper into it? Yeah. Um, Platonic Guardian says, "Where's As? I want my British Isles stream." Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we just <laughs> we do our best, but no, As isn't always available at my beck and call, you know. Um, YTU says, "Given talented writers, the Star Trek universe has so much potential, but I dread how badly they could foobar something like that these days." Well, yeah, you should dread it because you've seen it. You've seen how bad it can get. You know, but it shows you what you can do when you turn it around with decent writers. It's just, you know, all comes down to that. Uh, Gentleman Jarvis says, Gary, what you said about fatherhood was beautiful. You made me well up just a bit. I won't ever let them say that you're not a sweetheart. Well, there you go. Hopefully Gary sees this and he, mm -hmm. and he feels touched by it. Um, Mike Waterfield says, I'm still shocked that the TNG crew was allowed a happy ending. They were. It's taken like 20 years, but they finally got their nice send-off. So, nice to see it happen. John A. says, Drinker, my wife printed out photos of us at the ice bar in Orlando. The guy who said he doesn't read books. Uh, You're now framed on the wall. Cheers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks, man. 
Uh, Contagion says, Gary, I'm not a father, but my wife was informed today that our first child was officially miscarried. I can attest that for a moment I found something I didn't know I was missing and now it's gone. Shit, man, I'm sorry. Um, I don't even know what to say to that. I can only imagine how difficult it is to deal with. Um, yeah. Silk Crayfish says, seeing Enterprise would be like seeing Galactica. It would indeed. Um, Guardian Fortress says, when you say passing of the TNG short sorry tng torch of the nearest uh, the next trek i think of deep space nine it's my favorite trek and cisco is the best captain who else pinched q lol that is true yeah um everyone's got a soft spot for cisco but yeah for me it'll always be kirk um mongo hotline says the enterprise d was ethereally beautiful after all there is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in the proportion <laughs> Well, the D definitely had some strangeness in her proportions. She was a bit of a fatty, but hey, you know, still had a lot of character to her. Uh, Aurora Uplink says, I did like Grogu and Mando fighting together, though. I just, <laughs> I, I don't want to see Grogu anymore. <laughs> I don't want to see him fight. It's just, oh, that little puppet running about. I'll never get past yeah. that. Obsidian Mug says, Y'all didn't understand the brilliant foreshadowing for Bo-Katan getting the Darksaber. It was all in her name. Bo-Katana, get it? Yeah, we, we, we do. Sure. <laughs> Aurora says, what if Muff Gideon just wanted Ron Jeremy's jeans? I mean, it's always possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just what's, what's going to take him to the next level? Forget the force. It's Ron Jeremy's penis. Um, King Chainsaw says, the Grogu part was like the opening of Kung Pao. Kind of was actually, yeah. No, I yeah. Think about it. Uh, a confused rock says, Anyone else pissed that the ending of Picard season three gave us the kind of reunion that we wanted from Star Wars all along? Yeah, we are. I mean, it's great that we got it here, but it shows you what you do. You get favorite characters back together for one last adventure, and it's really fucking good. Yeah, because uh, even I saw the, like, they're all playing cards or whatever, right? At the end, it's just like, oh. Yeah. Star Wars didn't get that. <laughs> they certainly didn't. They got Rey Skywalker. Are you excited, consumers, for another Rey movie? Yeah. Kevin O'Neill says, The Mandalorian, among other things, was a terrible commercial for the Darksaber. That thing used to be cool. Now it's just fucking destroyed. He broke. He crushed it with his robo-hand. Yep. There's also one... Uh... Uh, it was a quote from season, I think season two, or fucking Book of Boba Fett, whatever. Where Mando says uh, he's never seen the, that quality of Beskar on the on the dark saber before. Wow, that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> Boop, gone. Fuck continuity. Um, Finny Ladder says, "Keep giving him hell, boys. We will. Thank you." The Pronto says, my favorite moment of the Mandalorian finale was Grogu in that rebel base bar at the end and walking in looking like he's straight out of Team America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, great. Genevieve says, sunglasses indoors. Who did it first, Andrew Tate or the critical drinker? I don't know if he did it first, but I did it better because oh. I've got hair. Uh Aurora Uplink says, Katie Sackhoff sounds amazing. Love the Battlestar Galactica and Mando. I mean, I half agree with you there. Battlestar Galactica was good. Um, but yeah, Katie Sackhoff seems pretty cool. She definitely takes the training seriously. Um, Pseudosign says, with all the new allegations about majors, just never forget uh, Julie Swetnick. From time to time, people just make shite up. I mean, I yeah. guess they do, yeah. That's why we tend to err on the side of innocent until proven guilty, you know? Seems like a, a pretty effective way to do the whole criminal thing. Um, Taylor Ramirez says, Isn't the Gideon problem the same as Kylo? Ray is the best Kylo in every movie. Or sorry, Ray bests Kylo in every movie. Uh, well, pretty much, yeah. Like, what is Moff Gideon at this point? He just gets his ass handed to him. Yeah, and every time he gets a fucking bigger army and every time he gets squashed. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And it's not like he's an intimidating physical presence either as a fighter. Like, as Gary pointed out, he's a 65-year-old man. Like, how, how fucking frightening could he be? Yeah, I mean, in the Star Wars universe, you know, old people can still be, like, hyper-threatening, like uh, the Emperor, for example. But we are dealing with a legitimately just old man. He's yeah, he only got, like, force. 
grabs himself a power suit, but do all of his clones, are they going to be having them? That was such a weird... The whole, I'm the whole... going to give them the force! The whole thing is stupid. Like, his whole outfit just looks like a really shitty cosplay of Darth Vader. Like, is that yeah. the best they could come up with? Really? Apparently. Um, yeah. Marilla Cuthbert says, All the repeating story beats Disney is doing in their shows and movies seems to send the message that they, for all their progressive pe preaching, are terrified of change. I think they're just terrified of, like, coming up with new ideas. They're terrified Generally, of, like... They, they, they don't know what the fuck's supposed to happen next. <laughs> Like, what do fans want? And then fans are like, we want this. And they're like, no, not that, though. Yeah. Um, Hello Computer says, Gideon is burned. Uh, uh, and Snoke has the Darksaber. I don't think so. The Darksaber's gone, man. Yeah. Um, the thing about it is the... I can't believe I'm saying this because it's like so stupid. But the other times we've seen Gideon, he's had a mustache. He hasn't. He didn't have one in in that episode. So everyone's like, "Oh, so we killed a clone. We didn't kill the real one." Or the actor just shaved his mustache off. This is Star Wars drinker. It could be insanity and stupid around the corner at every moment. I, I'm sure that the next time we see Gideon, he'll be like, "You didn't kill me, Mando. I didn't even have my mustache." It would just yeah, it would just be another vague Palpatine line. Like I've been dead before. It's like I'm not going to explain anything oh, beyond that. Stop it. <laughs> it's too, I'm too tired for this. Enough. Goob says, I can't believe Drinker and Mauler have never seen the Spawn movie. That movie is perfect for EFAP movies. Make it a double blade with, uh, sorry, a double feature with Blade for a perfect night of 90s edge. Mm. Definitely watch Blade again. I'm not against it. Uh, Aurelia, Aurelius Mosh says, Sup, Drinker, the EU story for Boba Fett is great. Bounty hunter till old age. Becomes reluctant leader of Mandalore by accident. Granddaughter he didn't know about tries to kill him and he adopts her. Sounds probably better than anything Disney's done. Yep. Jacob McQuaid says, Mandalorian season 3 stays the same whether or not Gideon escapes jail. Useless film in a pointless show. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, what, what episode is it? Like, six... I think, where we find out Gideon might not have made it to trial, which, that didn't even make a sense on its own. How didn't they know? He either went to trial or he didn't, guys. What do you mean, like, did he go to trial? I don't know. It's like, what? It feels like that's, that would have been a very publicly, whatever. And then it's like, so he's free. Oh my god, what a crazy revelation. And then in two episodes he's already fucked again. It's like, maybe, oh. his, maybe his clone went to trial. Did he have a moustache? That's the question. <laughs> um, edit man RG... G2 says, speaking of Street Fighter, Capcom recently announced a new SF movie and TV series in the works, so there's that. I mean, okay, yeah. Hmm. It's not going to be as good as the Raul Julia one, though. Um, Satiris Pyrobuses says, it's not Star Wars anymore, it's spinning wheels. <laughs> That's perfect, yeah. Yeah. Jaded Fett says, The Boba Fett story in the expanded universe was so much better than the crap that we got. Fett got himself out of the Sarlacc and tracked down Han Solo to get revenge. They ultimately have to fight off an ambush together and part ways with grudging respect. Yeah, imagine that. That could be an interesting that little would story. Be interesting. Norman Baroud says, Indiana Jones ratioed. Yeah, as far as I know. Um, Blazing Silver says, Whatever the fuck happens, I hope it's at least funny. I think we can guarantee that with Indiana Jones 5. Uh, Intelligent Crayon Eater says, Between Lost, Fringe, New Trek, uh, and New Wars, JJ sucks at finishing anything. Must be hell on his wife. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the mystery, though, you see. A Confused Rock says, Hail Drinker and Panel. How about Filoni and Matt Martin saying at Star Wars Commiseration that canon doesn't matter because it's all fake anyway? Is that what they said? I don't, I don't, like, I hope not. Because, like, I, I'm just waiting for the day where that's a market that's waiting to be taken advantage of once again. Just have someone say, hey, Canon's actually cool. Mm-hmm. Then a bunch of people will be like, whoa, that guy seems interesting. What does he make? It's a crazy new concept. Silk Crayfish says the Dark Knight plot is bad. Mauler, please analyze it. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I, uh... Yeah, you know, I haven't seen it in so long, slash, it's amazing. I don't know what you mean. You're crazy. 
<laughs> it's a dangerous one to speak out about it, though, isn't it? <laughs> I, I did it once with the the Dark Knight Rises, and I think I copped a lot of flack for that. For daring to suggest how that's it might be a flawed plot. See, that one is the one where I'm just like, "What do you mean? It's terrible." <laughs> I kind of hate Dark Knight Rises. I mean, the you know they're not as rabid as Snyder fans, but there's definitely a, a cult around like the Dark Knight trilogy and Chris and Nolan. Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, it must be amazing. Can't hear criticism for it. Uh, wildly mediocre says, "Cheers, lads! Starting a novel with my friend. Drinker, any software recommends for keeping organized? <laughs> no fucking idea. Yeah. You're asking the wrong person, mate, about keeping organized. I don't do that." Um, B Wade Green says, "For anyone, Carnival Row or Shadow and Bone?" Um, I've seen the trailer for the second one, Carnival Row. I only saw season one. I thought it was fine, so I don't think I can answer that question. <laughs> Uh, Callie Sue says, Drinker, thank you for destroying woke Hollywood with facts and logic. My pleasure. But give me hope. Will this end? Movies and shows are so bad. Are there any indie production companies uh, or shows that, or films that are going to save storytelling? Yes, it's called Rogue Elements and it's going to come out later this year. It's going to save Hollywood. Yay. Uh, but, yay. Go, Drinker. But no, seriously, I mean, I think um, we are starting to see more and more movies and, and uh, TV shows that are just bucking that trend and going against the message uh, and starting to gain a lot of traction. You know, like in the TV world, look at um, all the Taylor Sheridan stuff, like Yellowstone, Tulsa King. Um, you know, we had House of the Dragon, all pretty good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we had, we've had the Mario movie this, like just in the past few weeks, and it's doing crazy numbers. Just, mm -hmm. just um, you know, easygoing family entertainment. You know, no no politics or anything in it, and it's doing pretty well. So yeah, maybe this is uh, this is it starting to change now. Seems to be. Uh, Edit man says there was also a fan movie of Street Fighter called Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, a really good um, indie Street Fighter movie done by actual martial artists. The characters in the movie are Ryu, Ken, Akuma, and Goken. Fair play, nice. Uh, Big Dave says Farscape, Claudia Black. Yes. Yes. That's all I can say to that. Yes, I would. Um, OMG Puppies. So did anyone watch Lex? Strange show. Season 2 was good. The rest, not so much. I agree 100%. Lex was a weird fucking show. But it was completely off the wall. Um, it was very inventive. I think it was a joint Canadian-German production. So that's some interesting like writing philosophies behind it. But it was very sci-fi-ish. But kind of tongue in cheek and kind of sexual as well, which you can tell the the European influence there. Um, yeah, I liked I liked Lex. Uh, Nelson Sharita says Farscape, brilliant writing. Scorpius is a great villain. I see nothing wrong with that statement. Yeah, we did gush a little bit about it on that stream. So yeah, as we do, we tend to run to start at Farscape every once in a while. Yeah, we need to do a watch through one day. Um, Timmy04 says, what animated movies did you guys grow up watching? Um, Nightmare for Christmas. I watched a shit ton of that. Yep. Um, I watched Spirited Away a, a pretty good number of times and Howl's Moving Castle. Yep. Um, um, did you ever, when you were a kid, right, <clears throat> you've got kind of hazy memories of watching a film and... You know, you can only remember bits and pieces, but you know it made a big impression. You just don't know what it was called, and you kind of want to track it down as an adult. Yeah, like, I think some of those exist. I I definitely had that with Castle in the Sky, and it took me a long time before I figured out what it was. Um, and it made me extremely happy to rewatch it. It just totally brought back that rush of like childhood memories. So yeah, I was very happy with that. When you're like hyper familiar with a movie as a kid, and then you don't watch it for like ten years, and then you watch it again, it is a surreal experience sometimes. Because mm -hmm. you like you like remember some really specific and strange things, like maybe the way a character like moves an object, or the way they say one word, but you don't even know what's going to happen, like because you've forgotten broader things or whatever. Human mind's mm -hmm. really weird. Yeah, well, I guess that's when you think back to like important events. It's not like the the whole flow of the thing that that you remember. It's like you say, little moments, like flashes, almost, um, mm. when your mind kind of assembles that into a sort of narrative. But yeah, it's 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 a funny way of doing things. Um, but yeah, I guess like as a kid as well, like I kind of grew up in like that golden age of I think the Disney animated studios. So yeah, of course, know, would have been a lot of things like Lion King and. Um, 
you know, Aladdin, all that sort of things. You know, the great stuff. I know I watched then. the um, South Park movie many times. Yeah, <laughs> that nice. shit was funny as hell. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, Amado Romero says, Muller, what are your favorite symphonic metal bands? So currently, I have a quite, a, quite a few favorites, but I'll, I'll just stick to three. It would be uh, Power Wolf, Avantasia, and Rhapsody. They're my top three. But, you know, there's plenty of, There's plenty you guys all listened to. Recently, Drinky went and saw Sabaton live, right? I did, yeah. That's, I'm not uh, going to pretend uh, to be any kind of expert on metal by any measure. But wait, sorry, they said. Did they say symphonic metal specifically? Yeah, I was like, that's okay. a really specific genre. <laughs> well, it was fixed. There's still plenty of them. So I guess in that case, Power Wolf wouldn't count. Neither would Sabaton, actually. But uh, hmm. yeah, Avantasia and Rhapsody would. Um, there's there's a couple of others that would float around, but those two are like my main guys for for what would be called symphonic metal, I think. But I like. Both of them are actually considered symphonic and power metal at the same time, hmm. um, which I think Power Wolf are as well. And then Sabaton is like a mix of a couple of things, but I think they they considered power metal as well. I'm a big fan of both of those. Um, I used to, when I was a lot younger, it was heavy metal, but moved on to power and symphonic. They're like, I just fucking love the um, all the use of crazy instruments uh, that go beyond like your standard for metal. Hmm. Yeah, um, we should talk more about metal music if you if you like it. That's something we should do sometime. Well, yeah. I'm honestly, I'm I'm always open to learn more about it because, like, I'm just kind of uh, a total amateur with this stuff. But yeah, it'd be quite good to <laughs> like get some good recommendations for for other bands. You know, I think it was uh, when I first did a Q and A video after like some of my videos kicked off, and people were like, "What well, what music do you like?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, like specifically symphonic metal." People were like, "What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> I think everyone expects I listen to fucking like classic music or uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Just going going by the persona, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really fit. <laughs> uh, Nine Sun says finally made it to an open bar again. Just got to the sorry the Butikal Reserva exclusive already. Ah, oh, nice. Um, can wholeheartedly recommend it. It's a really good uh, middle priced rum, perfect to drink responsibly with friends or get hammered with by yourself. <laughs> I like it. Nice, uh, Gabriella. Canada says, Angel has a puppet episode, but do you hate Lower Decks? Uh, I mean, are the, is that the same thing? Are they comparable? Not even... Uh, smile Time... I wish Gary was here to hear that. He would fucking... <laughs> smile Time is one of the best episodes of TV ever. The puppet episode of Angel is fucking amazing. Um, uh, Lower Decks, from what I understand, is like fucking toilet humor type stuff. Which is like, isn't it so funny that we're naked? Isn't it so funny that that guy's vomiting? Hmm. Yeah, it seems to be. It's like wow, like you can just imagine people who were Star Trek fans back in the sixties, like seeing what what it's become, seeing that, and be like, "How is this in any way connected to what I'm watching?" You've seen, you've seen. I assume some of Buffy, right? You, uh, I forget what your. Uh, have you seen Angel? Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen bits of Buffy throughout the years. Angel, uh, there's a couple of well, same for Buffy. There's a couple of very unconventional episodes. It's like. Farscape is probably the main show I would pick for just unconventional episodes all the time almost, but Buffy and Angel have a couple and one of Angel's is he's <laughs> so that, like the, there's this guy who's running a puppet show that's getting less and less popular like on TV, so he makes a deal with literal fucking devils that they can increase his viewership uh, in exchange for basically his soul um, and then they take over his show and these these demons are like trying to run the, the, the puppet show in real life Angel catches on to it, and uh, he goes to the power source, I think, early on in the episode, and he goes to touch it, and it turns him into a puppet. Mm -hmm. And it is fucking hilarious, like, the whole episode. And it's kind of unbelievable, because you... Most people, I think, when you start watching it, you'd be like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> like, he's a puppet? And then by the time you hit the end, you, you, you're you in love with it. Hmm. They did a really good job. We should, um... Yeah, one day we should do, like, a little, like, you know, our top picks of, like, weirdest Farscape episodes or whatever. Um, I'll get for that. I need to rewatch it though. Whole thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nine Sun says, "Oh no, sorry." Craig Wilson says, "Thoughts on Doom Patrol storytelling and not getting renewed." I don't um, know. I haven't watched Doom Patrol, but I've heard a lot of people say it's pretty good. Uh, Nine Sun says, "Also, hello, Mauler. Just watched all down to EFAP number one lately. Pure gold. Love you all." Well, Watch glad it. you enjoyed it. That's got to be thousands of hours at this point. 
Yeah, don't worry. There's still plenty more to come. We did uh we did movie Bob recently and <laughs> this is fucking quote he had that was so funny. I I, I imagine some people are probably gonna clip it out and shit, but basically he was talking about whether or not Marvel fatigue is real and he was he, he wanted to cut to the chase and just be like, It ain't it ain't real. Everyone's fine, everyone's gonna love these movies forever. He even to the point was saying like he's still loving the movies. And by the by this point Ant Man was about to come out, so mm -hmm. even th fucking Love and Thunder was getting praise. And he says, um, when when people claim that they're like not enjoying it anymore for reasons of, let's say, for example, there's uh, points covered in the movies or there's there's uh, messages in the movies they don't like, that's not fatigue. That's simply changes in cultural positioning across the chronological passage of time. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> we like lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean fatigue? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the fuck was all that? Also, the chronological passage of time, as opposed to what? Yeah, the physical passage of time, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, Christ, it's like the guy just swallowed a dictionary or something. It's yeah. just like, well, I've got to regurgitate as many big words as I can to make myself sound smarter than I am. Um, yeah, bit of a bit of a pretentious twat, but yeah. I'm <laughs> He's good meme, meme uh, material. Uh, Mapel says, "Why haven't you referenced Seth MacFarlane's Scottish Man Watches movie series uh, in any of your videos? What are you doing? You're not using your brain." Uh, well, I mean, I guess I just haven't had a good opportunity, man. Um, Gabriel Canada says, "Hear me out, Captain Reba McIntyre, Texan Trek for the win. I would watch that." Uh, Party Am CV says, "Dude, that's a hell of a sick bra, radical and tubular." Well, what can we say? Mm -hmm. Uh, Marksman of 117 says best accent oh, uh, toity toyed like curly in three stooges <laughs> okay uh, Yaddy says hi Moe what did you think of Elden Ring as an animated series with George R.R. R. Martin and Miyazaki involved Melania and her brother uh, Michaela as the main characters so yeah, like, theoretically could, if they made it could work um, just give a shit about the Ryan that's pretty much my thing for everything that ever gets made yeah. Uh, Ultra says IG88 should have died at the hands of Dash Randar. I guess so. Um, Wingnut says let the writers go. Who cares? New people will be better. Yeah, I don't think it's as simple as that, though. If the writers go on strike, I think basically it shuts everything down. It's not just like we don't yeah. have new people writing for us, it's like all the unions just kind of follow suit. Um, Quinn Thompson says, Gary, don't be fat shaming Star Wars pilots. Zero gravity, and if they're that large, then they're probably spending all their time in flight sims. Pro gamer equals pilot. <laughs> Aye, that'll be it. Uh, John Thomas says, how is B5 sleeping in light not the best ending in TV history? I, I think you mean Babylon 5, I guess. Is that what you're referencing? Um, it could well oh. be. Are they also, wait, are they saying they didn't like the ending? Uh, no, they're saying, like, how is it not considered the best ending in TV history? Oh, because Angel is the best ending in TV history, that's why. There you go. <laughs> Cannot be beaten, and it never will. <laughs> uh, Accident Seller says, girl bosses, you say? Didn't know that Star Wars is mostly a girl's brand? Oh, wait. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Uh, Keaton Kitsune says, thoughts on the Warriors? Haven't seen it in a very, very long time. Remember quite liking it at the time, though. Mm -hmm. Uh Justin Price says, what is a bigger disappointment, the ending of Game of Thrones or what has become of Star Wars? Tough, eh? Uh, at that point, it's just whichever one you were more invested in at the time. Because they've I mean, both the, been destroyed. The Game of Thrones collapse was quicker. So I don't know if that's like easier to rip the band-aid off or if it's just like a shock that it, it happened so dramatically. But, I don't know. Yeah, some Star might Wars argue is... it was falling apart for four seasons. <laughs> I mean, some might, but like most people probably didn't notice it until like midway through season seven. And, yeah. You know, really, it came. It became disastrous in season eight. Um, Intelligent Crayon Eater says Johnson's Brick was good. It had all of the noir tropes transported into a high school setting and done correctly. But I might have a bias as I watched it in Afghanistan, and I have some nostalgia towards it. I mean, that's fair play. Yeah. I mean, I'm open to the possibility that Brick was a really good movie. I just haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. You know, same with, you know, Jojo Rabbit or Hunt for the Wilder People. Those were good movies made by Taika Waititi. Um, it's well, something he's apparently able to do at some point. 
But it doesn't mean that uh, I've got a better opinion of his, his later stuff. Yeah. Uh, Eric Linegar says, any thoughts on the Evil Dead Rising? I'm seeing it tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't totally suck. I'm hopeful for it. I haven't seen it yet, though. Um, Duck Dust says, how long until the Ms. Marvel actress is cast to play young Ahsoka in Mando Season 4 flashbacks alongside guest star Pedro Pascal? Keep up the good work. Mm. Just, yeah. I mean, these people get reused in everything, don't they? If you're signed yeah. up with Disney, you're going to be in Star Wars and Marvel and God knows what else. Uh, the Gourd King says, if the Mandalorian ever becomes the woman Mandalorian, does Moff Gideon then become Muff Gideon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make it so. Make it so. Uh, Cam Frenchy says, Hey Drinker, Mauler, and Nerdrotic, will you watch the 2023 Three Musketeers? I highly recommend it. Is there a new Three Musketeers movie com coming out? Uh, I, I know nothing of this. Hmm. I shall have a little look. Um, Kate C, aka, aka Snake uh, Plush Kitten, says, Thoughts on Alec Baldwin's charges being dropped? Well, it's amazing how well the wheels of justice turned for you when you're a super rich celebrity so yeah all good i'm sure that movie's going to be successful now uh aurora uplink says black star warrior trailer free watch it now please all right can take a look um i found a because vincent cassell and ava green are in a three musketeers movie that's coming out or is out it's 2023 anyway that might be the one they were talking about i guess the Mila um, Jovovich one will never hmm. be topped, clearly. No, that one, they peaked, and they can kind of just put it to bed now. That's yeah. it. Um, that, that genuinely blew me away. Everything, Every time I thought that movie had reached peak, um, well, Mila Jovovich-ness, it, it found a new way yeah. to top itself. And it did, they, they wanted to get a sequel. They wanted the, the Three Musketeers universe, and we didn't get it because the audience weren't ready for it, you know? That's it. It was too good. It was too far it was ahead too of good. its time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's only a couple more actually. John Papa Sergio says people forget the question in Force Awakens was when Ray's parents were coming back. She was even rally, sorry, even tallying the days, not who they were. She knew who they were. Yeah, it's interesting that it's almost like they totally changed their idea halfway through. Um, What's your first thought? Says even the Event Horizon crew didn't need eyes to see that the Mando show is shit. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Uh, Loopy Locust gave us twenty dollars. Cheers, mate. Uh, Silent Evil said, "Is Picard season three the Revenge of the Sith of the prequel trilogy installment of the Picard show? At least we got a somewhat decent one out of the lot." It's the I best mean, of the three. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and the last one is Matt Thomason. He says, "Have you guys watched Dark? Amazing German show, Netflix original. Amazing character work and incredible writing, directing, and cinematography." I started watching it. I just haven't really given it my full attention yet but i liked this i liked what i was seeing so far it was quite thought-provoking i guess i thought it was good right up until i couldn't follow it anymore and i thought it was because i just i didn't pay enough attention that was my bad fair play but uh well that's the last of the super chats so thank you to all you guys for sending them in uh, appreciate it i'm sorry we didn't get through all of them on the night but it's just impossible there's too many um but yeah hopefully we've been able to answer all your questions here and you will catch us again on the next open bar on Thursday. So I guess that's all we got. Is there anything else from you, Mauler? No, sir. All righty. Well, that's all we've got for today. So go away now. <laughs>